What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the second episode of Project Aura. I'm happy to present this game to you. It's a very, very streamlined game for an indie developer. I'm really, really impressed with just like the presentation of the game. It's just pretty to look at and it's rare that a game has this much attention to detail in the indie genre when it comes to like full 3D photorealistic graphics and I'm actually fairly impressed with it. But what we're going to do today is in the previous episode we had messed around with getting two of our residential sectors built up and we had to get our population pooping so that we could start making some fertilizer for later constructions. The next thing that we really, 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 really want to focus on is going to be constructing a hangar. And I know you might be like putting one eyebrow up in kind of like a strange sideways question mark configuration right now because I said we're going to build factories. Well, I've been fiddling around with the game quite a bit in my own free time and I've realized a few things that were wrong about my operational procedures. And so there are things that I do want to do inside of the game, but I'm kind of like fiddling with things. I'm learning things along the way too. But I'm trying to teach players like how to get things up and running. So, let's go ahead and we need to build a hangar. And so I think we could find the hangar over here. Now the thing you need to realize about the hangar is that this is a very, very expensive undertaking. The hangar is actually, it's a robust facility that takes quite a few materials. We need 155 of the alpha prefabs. So let's go to the store real quick and we'll see if we can handle some of this stuff. So, we need alpha prefabs, so we're going to need... Oh, we already have 40 of them. Good, that's nice. That means that we need 115. Let me see if I can lock that down very quickly. There's 115 right there. Hopefully my math skills aren't terrible, and I'm not making myself look foolish on live YouTube pre-recorded television something. I don't know. I... I got nothing right now. It's early in the morning. I just woke up. I rolled out of bed and I was like, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to record a little bit of extra Project Aura because I think it's a game that has gotten inside of me and is just like itching me in a lovely fashion right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We need electrical parts. We need three control panels. Probably going to need a bunch of control panels for any. I'll, I'll tell you this much. If there's a plane that I'm riding on, I hope that it has control panels. And also I hope that the flight guy that's like helping it fly around also has flight panels. I would just... I would just say that that's probably a thing that I would prefer that it have. There it is. And so now our hangar should be ready to go. I'm going to start segmenting things off and putting them in different areas. It doesn't really matter where we put it. I think that looks lovely. And while it says that you, it comes with a plane, it does not actually come with a plane. You actually have to go and like purchase one in just a second. But what we're going to do with the plane is that we need to like get this thing configured. And I didn't realize this. I, I don't know if I mentioned this. Basically, I've re-recorded this second episode like eight times now. I made a save and I've just been playing the game for like hours and hours and hours and trying to learn things and messing with things because I wanted this to be as good of a learning experience for everybody as possible. And so you need to make a hanger next. If you don't make a hanger next, it actually sort of hobbles you a little bit. Not exactly to like the misery extent that like, you know, Michael Kahn, was that James Kahn or was that Michael Kane? Hmm, I think that's James Kahn. I think that's who it is. He got hobbled. Anyways, I used to know stuff. I used to work at a movie store and I used to know stuff about movies. And now like I always brain fart when I try and remember actors' names. Basically, I worked in like the movie rental industry for years and years and years. And it ended up putting me in like a weird situation where I have just enough information to screw up now. So we need a ship mission blueprint. Okay, not to be confused with a shit mission blueprint, which is what we've put all of our people in the residential sector on. We may have to build a few more residential buildings in order to properly produce fertilizer for right now. I don't know what it costs from one of these eco groups. Let's find out here. I don't know if it's worth it. They got plastic garbage, organic garbage, seaweed. I actually don't see fertilizer in here anywhere. Yeah, so fertilizer might be one of those things that you can only produce for yourself, but let's stick to the task at hand. As we said in the first episode, there are a couple things you need to do when you get a hangar set up. We need building maintenance, we need ship missions, and then we need a director. So let's see if we could... Do I have a director right now? I have six unemployed at the moment. I do have a director. So we have Lori Gill Ramsey, who sounds like she'd be the kind of individual that would run her own cooking show. We'll put her in over here as the director. And now we need to find ourselves a ship mission, and we need to find ourselves a building maintenance code. All right, building maintenance blueprint. The building maintenance blueprint makes it so that if you assign technicians to the building, they'll do all the little maintenance tasks that need to get done to keep the building from, like, falling over and breaking and all that fun stuff. And so since I largely prefer that my buildings stay upright and erect, I suppose that I'd prefer them to stay standing up. So if they fall down, I'd be a little bit upset. It's a little bit of a wasted investment if we break it right after that. So what we needed was building maintenance, which I think is in, let's see here, building maintenance. There's one. Sure, I'll take it. And then we need to get ourselves some space flight missions too for our ship. And so in order to, there's resource extraction right here. Let's go ahead and take that. 
That's the one that we're going to need. And then we also have to buy a plane that can fly out of this location. And for that, we're going to buy an alpha ship. And so you see what I mean? This is where it gets expensive. It's going to cost you around 1000 to get your hangar up and running. But the alpha costs a bunch of money. So it'll set you back a pretty good grip right there. We'll buy ourselves an alpha. And so now we need to drag and drop all of these lovely things into this area. So we've got our building maintenance terminal here. We'll drop that down to, well, it's going to be on the outside. Let me expand this window out. I like this window to be large for some reason. It makes me happier. We need a pilot. So we'll hire a junior pilot. Yes, wake the citizen up. How many technicians do I have? Do I have any technicians or do I only have versatiles? I have operators. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a technician or two as well. I think we should only need like one technician in order to keep the building up and running. I don't know. The building's health is displayed right here. And so as the building deteriorates, you'll see your technician is trying to offset that with his rotations every cycle. The things that he tries to do is denoted by 10% increases, I believe, every single time that he completes one of his little aero cycles. So we'll put him over here in aero cycle. That sounds badass. That sounds like a levitating motorcycle. It's the aero cycle, but it's spelled like arrow like in Final Fantasy. Anyways, we'll take a, we need a mission right here for resource extraction. And this is kind of like the go-to thing that you need to have for like everything. And the other thing that you might not realize that they really don't tell you anywhere is that you can set this to gather different materials. So you're sending out a pilot who's going to go and gather various materials. Right now it's set to organics extraction. Organics extraction means that you're going to get organic garbage out. Organic garbage, I think you can turn into fertilizer using some other facility if you process it properly. But what we want, there's plastics extraction too, which will give you plastic scrap, which is actually not so bad. Plastic garbage, you can use that to start up your whole plastic industry. What we need right now is we need, let's see, organics, metals. Which one do we want? I think we want organic garbage, I think, is the one that we want. And so we'll set it to organics for right now. It's going to be organics extraction. We need to bring our plane in here. So let's bring in the alpha. There it is right there. You will see that there's a linking slot right there. The alpha also has a bunch of things you can link to it, like scanners. You can get it guns. You can get it cargo. You can get it all kinds of things. So I'm assuming there's going to be combat in the game later on. It seems like there will be. We need to get a pilot right here. So we'll run a pilot down up in here. There we go. And then we also need a technician. Now, this was a fairly expensive cost adventure for us, or a cost venture. This actually cost us a pretty big grip of cash, but you have to have this because this is the only building that produces raw materials. And you wouldn't think that a hangar would do that, and so it took me a while to find this. I thought the hangar was going to be like a location where, I don't know, you made gunships or something. I just thought it was going to be for combat because I saw the materials for, like, guns and cargo and things like that. So I figured at some point you were going to have to make a location where... I guess you had combat taking place. Let me speed the game up real fast. I'm going to put it on times four. That's where I prefer for it to be at so that our cycles go a little bit quicker. Especially since so much of this game is just going to be me explaining things. The game does suffer a bit from detail creep. Where the first time you play the game, you're going to be confused and be like, what the hell? Even if you have done the tutorial, there's still stuff that I've played for four or five hours now. And there's still stuff that I'm finding on forums where I'm like, oh, so that's how you do that. Like little pieces of the puzzle that have been missing the entire time. So anyways, let's take our technicians here. I think I only need one. I'm pretty sure I'll only need one to keep this thing up and running. And so now what we want to do is, I don't really know if we need, let's see here. It looks like it can have extra cargo, shields, shields and a scanner how much do those cost because i've never outfitted a plane before so this is kind of like a let's see here we have a solar shield which is 250 the scanner is kind of expensive and the cargo is fairly expensive as well okay well it's not too bad so what i would say is we should probably get i mean it seems like we need a solar shield right because we are living in a world where random i don't know like solar novas and things could cause problems right it seems like this would be an issue for us and you drag these in here just like you figure you would basically everything works the exact same throughout the entire game like you just kind of like drag and drop things into the window where you want them i still wish like what i would say for the developers is definitely consider allowing this window to be expanded out further because i have just enough room now to not be able to organize things the way that i want to but just to barely organize them in like a satisfactory manner so it's kind of like one of those things. I like to have a little bit more space when I work. So let's bring these all up so that they're not in the way. And then we'll get these all linked up. I don't know how these assist or how these make our missions any better. But I would feel better if we had a shield on our craft because it was very, very expensive. And if it gets blown up like five seconds after we send it out on a mission, I'm going to be very, very upset. I'm going to be in a state of disarray. I'd be like, eh, 
disarray, dad array, his array, her array. Let's go ahead and send him out on a materials extraction mission. I would say that we should probably send him out. Is it a him or a her? Our pilot. It's a her. Minerva Ewing Church. That definitely sounds like one of those old pilot names from the 1950s. It's Minerva Church. She's flying her bi-wing in a spectacle to be seen all over South Carolina. Let's go ahead and we'll start that off. We'll do that ten times and you'll see the plane takes off right there. I don't think this is properly animated yet. Because from what I've seen, the plane is in there no matter what you do. And so I, I would like it to where it's empty until you buy a plane and assign a plane to it. That's just my preference. The next thing we probably want to get up and running. These are both producing manure, right? They're not quite there yet. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we're going to need a bunch of manure and fertilizer. That would be the worst job ever. You arrive on a new colony after being awoken from cryo, and your job is just to be a shit sweep. Not even like a horse ships, a horse, like a horse shit sweep. I can talk right now. It's early in the morning, but I'm trying really hard. Like, horse manure and cow manure isn't that bad, unless it's been sitting there and coating the bottom of the stall for a while. It's not too bad because it's mostly like hay and other stuff but human uh, human refuse i guess i don't know at least everybody here is probably going to be regular because we eat so much seafood by the way our seaweed do we get this set? i'm actually going to cut this ration in half because we're going to drain ourselves out really really quickly so we have enough food for six days right now we're on day two so by day eight we'll have to rebuy supplies and that'll keep everybody rebuy supplies and keep them from dying i don't know it, it's sort of rhymed and then we all cry and then our plane goes to the sky to fly. You see what I mean. It's all working around that way. All right. So what we want to do now is we probably want to get a water purification facility up and running, a desalinator. The desalinator is important because it's one of the only buildings in the entire game that is self-sufficient. If you build a desalinator, it does its thing all by itself. It doesn't need any help. It doesn't need any plugins. It doesn't need a production line. It just produces water portions for you. And so, A, it's a very good building to build if you're trying to make money because they'll actually pay you for the water you produce if you send it back to the market. So, like, two desalinators, usually a pretty good way to earn some extra cash, especially since the production cycle tends to be pretty quick with it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to leave this over here. And we're actually, I think I'm going to start building all of our seaweed factory type stuff on this side. So all the things that are leading into the seaweed factory, I guess. Hey, we got our first thing of fertilizer. Now they have said, the developers have said that they're going to make something that allows you to buff the speed at which your guys poop inside these buildings to make more fertilizer. As of right now, the only way I've figured out to actually produce enough fertilizer to keep your production line going is to make a ridiculous block of housing down here, which obviously drains your resources for other things. So for right now, we're just going to keep an eye on it and we'll build things as necessary to make ourselves more efficient. I think two of these more would probably be fine, but judging from the fact that we're actually a little bit low on cash right now, I think that, oh, I should probably, let me let me set up the maintenance right here. I think I forgot to turn it on. Let's go ahead and have him do infinite maintenance right here because, yeah, this building's already breaking down. So just do infinite maintenance right there. And if we can't play catch up, what I'll do is I will make with the mustard and we'll add a second person over here to help out with that. But each time this thing arrives up here, I think it takes, ooh, it takes six cycles to complete that. We may, we may need a second technician in order to keep this building up and running. Let me go ahead and see if I can find one real fast. We don't have one, but we have a versatile, I think, that isn't working. So let's take a versatile, and we'll throw Lillian Avery Thorn in here. And Lillian Avery Thorn can help out with the other process. That one does five, so they're doing 13 per cycle, which means that 14 per cycle, it's rounding up. So it's only going to take them three cycles to get a repair done. That means every three cycles, how long does this take? 24 cycles. So for three cycles, hold on, I want to get this as efficient as possible. So three cycles, that means they're going to repair eight times to every... Let's say that I disable this individual right here. Hold on. By the way, you know how in the earlier episode I was trying to figure out how you get people to go away? You highlight them, then you press delete. And that's seriously as simple as it is. So we got eight right there, six cycles to complete that. Whereas over here, four cycles... Okay, so it takes 24 cycles. That means there's going to be four completions. This should be fine with one technician, I think. It should be okay. I don't think there should be any real problems here. This should work out. Hopefully our plane doesn't crash and like blow up in the middle of the ocean or something because we spent a lot of money on it. And damn, is my insurance company going to be angry if we crash this ship this early. I don't think that they're going to allow me to file the claim. They'll be like, you crashed it already? Really? Anyways, back to business. Let's build some stuff. We need to build some desalinators. And so that's what we're going to do. That's a desalination plant right there. I think I'll probably put it over here with the remainder of everything. These are actually fairly cheap. 
they're about they're a little over a thousand credits to build so I may build two of them and get those up and running that'll put us down to 11,000 in the early game you need to be focused on how much money you have and you need to get things that are productive and desalination plants are pretty damn productive by comparison to just about everything else so let's go for it we're gonna go over here we need to grab ourselves some alpha prefabs we need 410 of these so let's go ahead and get going on those So there's the 410 that we needed right there. We need 100 metal. Damn, this is getting expensive quick. Okay, so we've got that. We need four control panels. And two electrical equipment. So we'll purchase that. That's going to be fine, though. We should be able to make that money back fairly quickly on the desalination plants. I'll probably leave this for residential over here. But on the top end, since we're not going to have room for everything anyways, what I may attempt to do is just stack up some desalinators and we'll see how much money we can make right here so in order to get desalinators up and running we need directors we always need directors I can never get enough directors in this game and in fact I've seen people complaining about it on the forums how you get like a million of everything else except for directors building maintenance is going to be an issue so let's go ahead and hire some technicians obviously there we go technician technician that one was actually leveled up a little bit so he's going to be a tad more expensive but it'll be all right Hopefully in just a second we'll have the things that we need, but for right now we need building maintenance and we need water desalination. So let's get two building maintenance, which I think was in this corporation right here. Building maintenance. No, that's the research corporation. It's this one right here. There we go. We need two building maintenances. And then on top of that, we needed to get ourselves water desalinations. There it is. Try not to overbuy these little blueprints. It'll cost you a lot of money and you'll regret it at the end of the game. It'll It'll suck. You'll run out of money and then you'll just be like, well, damn. I would actually recommend playing the game on easy the first time around just to kind of like get a feel for it. Because frankly, starting off on normal with my limited experience has not been, it's a little stressful. Look how little money we have right now. Hopefully we'll be able to make that up with our desalination plants. They should be able to pump out quite a bit. Do we have any new people in here? Come on, I need directors. Directors, where are you? Okay, well... Let's go ahead and use one of our versatiles then. I think we have a couple of versatiles left, so we'll just have to make do with what we have for right now. That's exactly what they're doing down in the residential sector, by the way. They are making do like crazy. We need operators. I didn't realize we needed so many operators for this. Okay. Well, there are no operators available, so let's focus on getting everything else set up right now while we wait. I'm pretty sure I just defrosted two of these guys, and one of them is missing. So don't, it appears to me, the game loses characters sometimes, and I don't know if that's a bug or if it's a feature waiting to be implemented, but when I click on people and I defrost them, occasionally they do not go into, oop, there's a director right there. I shall have you join me. On this side, we have a versatile, which we're going to need. I'll take the versatile, and then the other thing we need is a technician, since the other one deleted itself. Every now and again it happens, by the way. You lose a technician. I, I can't explain it to you. Every now and again when you, like, defrost somebody, they just disappear and they don't go to your inventory. I've noticed it a few times now. It's happened enough times to where I've given notice. Over here on this side, what we want to do is we're just going to get some versatiles up and running. Up until the point where we can actually get operators to fill in for them. Because... There's not much we can do aside from that. You'll note that they have like a little yellow figure right there. Let's get this started, by the way. We just want to produce as much water as possible from right here. They're doing 16 work, which means, or 15 work, so we got six cycles to complete. That's fine, which means that if I really get this going, we should be able to make some money. But water portions sell for one credit apiece. And so basically, you're printing your own money right now whenever you do this. I'm going to go ahead and we'll run routine maintenance over here because these buildings do break down very, very quickly. So we'll get that started with both of the technicians. On this side, we'll keep an eye out to see if we've got any further versatiles. Do we have another director right there? I'll take him. Let me have that director so that we don't have to use any more versatiles. And then what I'll do is I'll get... Well, I'll leave that versatile where it is. We'll save the other director for later. How's that sound? We'll leave it like a leftover. It'll be fine. Still got $9,000 left. I don't know if we're going to have enough to get everything set up. We'll be close. There's a technician right there. We need operators, though. I guess I'll buy the technician real fast because I don't have a choice. But we definitely need some other stuff. 
Did he come back with that? Oh, good. He came back with the organic materials. What can we sell those for? 20 credits. The things in this game, they do not sell for much. That's actually the cost for the entire stack. That's not per each one of those. So it's going to take you a while to get yourself stocked up on some of the things you need in order to work properly through the game. However, this is meant to be a game that's more about, like, planning and, like, sitting around and accomplishing things than actually... Well... Damn, I need to, I wish there was a button you could click to, like, pay money to have this recycle because we are wasting a lot of time right now waiting for this to, like, come back. Either way, let's get the other building set up while we wait. It'll be okay. We just need to get this thing ready. So this desalination plant right here, we need a director. So there's our director. On this side, we needed to plug in some of our blueprints for both the building maintenance and for the desalination operation. And so there are those. We'll drag the lines over. I do like the UI in this game. I will say that the UI is sort of, like, charming. I don't know. I've never seen a game that allows you to attach your production lines like this, and I like it. I don't know what's going to happen when this risk meter hits 18%, by the way. I have no idea. I assume it's something horrible and cataclysmic, so we probably want to hustle. Let's see. Do the hustle. Bink, 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 we don't have any technicians left. Oh, no, we do have a technician right there. Okay, so that's fine. We've got to wait till versatiles become available or until we actually have operators. For right now, we're leaving our colony in a little bit of a... Well... Oh, we have two operators? Hold on. Put those in there. I Did I buy those? I don't remember buying those, but I feel dumb now. Either way, if we can get both buildings up and running, I feel like that's fairly important right now. So let's do it. So there's that right there. We'll get these all up and running. Let me turn this on real fast with my super secret turn on the building skills. How do you turn on a building? It's the same way you do anything else, twerking. It's mostly twerking. We'll turn that on right there. It's going to lose a little bit of durability. And then let's get this building up and running for maintenance too. I think I may be overdoing it. With how many cycles is it taking them to produce right now? Perfect. So every single time that they finish a production cycle, it'll take 10% off. Right now, it's actually basically in an equilibrium. It takes him six cycles to repair the building. It takes them seven cycles to break the building. So there you go. If you have two technicians, it's actually a little bit slower. But anyways, we should have some things coming down the pipe pretty soon. I mean, they're taking their sweet time right now, but until we get more operators, we're not going to have like any real production skill going on. Yeah, we're still rocking that same group of people right there, and it's not rotating them. Also, our food supplies are low, which is super special. Already? We have enough for two days? Oh, well, it doesn't look that bad. Is it that bad? I don't feel like it's that bad right now, but they pinged it down here, and there's a new colonist we can awake. Well, let me have a look at that then. Lickety splickety. Well, there's nobody here that I want. I wish that you could disable, like, you would think, because we have all these people down in the cryo bay down in here, right? We should have, like, a manifest that tells us what we have. Why can't we just pull out what we need when we need it? It would just be a point that I would raise. If we're able to, like, cryo defrost people, I would like a lore explanation why we can't just, like, defrost the people we need and why they're occasionally added and removed from this list. Just, like, a little thing for people like me that really prefer to, like, sit and stare at lore and figure out, like, why things are happening that are happening. That plane is out doing its thing, right? Okay, how is this building doing? Is it falling apart? No, it's actually looking pretty good right now. I think we should be all right. We spent a bit of money. That's the thing is we spent a lot of money getting this ship up and running. I don't know what the scanner even does. I think it probably makes it, like, do its job faster. Maybe. But it's also possible that the scanner may not be implemented yet. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have a description. It gives plus 25 extraction. So I don't know if that makes them go faster, maybe. Got 30 fertilizer and 10 water. So we're doing pretty well right now. I think what I may do... Oop, there's our little guy running in between the buildings. These desalination facilities, until we have more people ready to be defrosted, I can't really get this up and running the way that I want to. We still have the exact same group right here, don't we? All right, well, I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Project Aura, where we are starting to get our production lines up and running. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.